Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap where this week I've got some really lovely stories. Uh, one's about bitterns, one's about albatross and another's about Siberian ruby throats. Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap. My first story today is about an albatross and a particular albatross. This is an amazing story. Just recently, off the Western Australian coast in Australia, a photographer was so lucky to get a photograph of a wandering albatross that was sitting on the water, and it raised its leg up in a way where the photographer was able to photograph the band that was on its leg. And from that number that we were able to read from that photograph, we worked out that this bird was 46 years old. It was banded as a chick on the Crozet Islands, which is way down in the Indian Ocean near Madagascar. And this bird was photographed just off the Albany coast in WA. There's a particular area where albatross uh, congregate, a couple of hours uh, steaming out from Albany. And this lady and a number of other ornithologists were out photographing seabirds, and they came across, across this albatross, which they photographed. Australia's oldest bird, one of the oldest albatrosses on the planet, 46 years of age. Now, wandering albatrosses are birds we, we find fascinating. We, we find their stories, their life cycles really interesting. Sadly, they're down to about 10,000 individuals, and there's a lot of efforts to try and protect those birds, both at their nesting sites and when they're fishing at sea. But what a great story. We now have this record of a bird, 46 years old, still out there, still flying, banned as a chick, and what a Great thrill it would have been to have taken that photograph and realised once you could see the band number, the, the, the band, the ring that was around the bird's leg, once you could read that number, we could identify that bird and know how old it was and where it had come from. What a great story. My second story today is about Siberian ruby throats. Now this bird has a peculiar name, but it's a, it's a common bird in, in Russia and they migrate down through Asia. Now, like many of these migratory birds that migrate from northern parts of the world, say North America or Northern Europe or Northern Asia, sometimes they get confused when they go south and they don't end up where they should normally go. And this particular Siberian um, ruby throat ended up on an offshore island from Australia, Christmas Island, which is now becoming one of the world hotspots for these rare birds that turn up that that have uh, gone off, off course. But now this bird is now recorded on the Australian bird list and it's made a lot of excitement for Australian birders wanting to get out to Christmas Island and Cocos Island nearby to see some of these rare birds that turn up because they've taken a wrong turn. Occasionally we've done, I've done some stories about them occasionally also turning up on the Kimberley coast. These birds that overshoot their normal Asian destinations um, on their way south. And hopefully these birds do get to do a return journey back to their breeding grounds in the, in the following summer. But the Siberian ruby throat just recorded on Christmas Island in Australia, a quite an exciting uh, observation and now proving that Christmas Island is a location in Australia where we often will get birds that don't normally occur on the Australian continent. And my last story today is about bitterns. Now, many people would know bitterns, they're that brown bird that stalk around a bit like a heron. They stalk around in the swamps. Uh, when they want to make themselves concealed, they'll stand with their bills upright uh, in a shape a little like the reeds that are around them. They have striations down their bodies. And around the world, there's a number of different species of bitterns. In the UK, the European bittern is a bird that a lot of work has been done on for the last hundred years because it was last recorded breeding in England in the 1870s with all the clearing of swamps that occurred with the development of farm country, particularly in the north and the east of uh, the United Kingdom, a lot of the swamp ground was drained and the bitterns disappeared and were no longer nesting. They found their own way back, amazingly, in the early part of the 1900s. And just after the Second World War, when many of these swamp areas had been left abandoned uh, to try and protect England from potential tracked vehicles coming across land and, and an invasion, swamp land was left abandoned and the bitterns built up again just after the Second World War, is amazingly. But then they dropped away again. And so what's been happening in the UK is they're now doing an extremely difficult job of actually re repairing a lot of these swamp lands putting back water into areas where uh, that are dry, dried out completely or have been overgrown with weeds. And now the European bittern 
is an established bird back in the UK. There's about 100 sites now where they believe that they're nesting. They had disappeared in the 1870s completely. So now we have these breeding birds. And one of the attractive things, I suppose you could say, about bitterns is they have this extraordinary call, this booming call. It's the loudest calling bird in the United Kingdom. And when the males are booming, you can hear it hundreds of metres away. And they have this eerie booming call from the reed beds, which uh, actually generated a lot of sort of stories of mystery about swampland. And in fact, in Australia, probably the, the origin of the, the rumours about and the stories about a, an animal called a bunyip that lives in the swamps. But uh, in the UK, they've now got this bird back, which is a great story. And with uh, diligence and with hard work in those swamp countries, presumably the, um, and hopefully the bitten will remain well established in the UK into the future. So three really great stories this week. I've hoped you've enjoyed them. If you want to see any more of uh, my stories, check out my YouTube channel, check out my website for uh, any other information that you might want to get. Send me a, a question for me to answer on, on any bird subject. Uh, and if you want to go out on one of my local bird walks in the Canberra area or tours around Australia, check out my website, neilhermes.com.au. Thanks and happy birding.